Hello, Facebook family. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Ryan Lestrange here, and I'm excited to be coming to you on an evening broadcast. And I have a great friend of mine who is going to be sharing today. I've been doing a series I started yesterday, interviews with apostolic women. Of course, I've been telling all the men we're not excluding you, leaving you out. I just believe there's some really fascinating uh, female powerhouses that God is raising up in this hour. And I wanted to bring this guest on because I know her and because she released a prophetic word about something that God has really, really been dealing with me about that I think is so critical in our lives, in our family lives. If you're in the kingdom of God, this is something that is a major thing that you're going to go through and that happens to you, unfortunately, and that is betrayal. We're going to be talking about how do you overcome this thing of betrayal? Have you ever been through a betrayal? Have you ever been through something where somebody did something to you that devastated you, that wounded you, that you had a very difficult time overcoming? Well, then we're going to talk to you. So let me know where you're joining me from. I want to greet a few of you. I see Fresno, California. I see Shonda Makula, one of the great worship leaders here in Atlanta. I love you so much. I see my mom on. I see Port Ritchie, Florida, Newport Ritchie, Florida, Trinidad, Apostle Nigel. I love you. Fresno, so many of you. Would you do me a favor? Would you share this broadcast? Would you also uh, keep commenting, putting emojis throughout the time? You know, it's a funny thing, but on Facebook, that can boost up the video in the algorithm. So you kind of help me to spread the word that we're on, that we're live, that we're talking about something very important. Triona, I hope you've had a great day. You're here in Atlanta. I love you. Uh, Merja in Finland, great to see you. So welcome everybody. Share, uh, keep commenting, put emojis there. We're so appreciative. If you like what you hear tonight, you can always send stars. I want to bring my guest on to just get right into this. You know her. Um, she used to be the senior editor at Charisma Magazine. She did a brilliant job there. She is a best-selling author. I mean, I don't even know how many books she's written. Her and I led a revival network for a period of time together. We partnered. We did a lot of things together. And we talked about on her platform how we've recently reconnected. And it's been very exciting. So she is based in South Florida. And I want to bring her on now, Apostle Jennifer LeClaire. She is my guest tonight. I'm so happy you're here, Apostle Jennifer. Thank you, Apostle Ryan. So good to be with you. Yeah, we did this over on your Facebook. We had a brilliant yeah. time. So many people watched that video yeah. and I wanted to do something here. And so I wrote a book and if you guys haven't gotten it, it's called Betrayal from Hell. And I really never thought about writing anything like this. It was very interesting because I committed to write this with Charisma about a year before I actually went through a really challenging experience in the ministry that definitely qualified for uh, this, the material of this book. And I never knew that this would happen, but as is the case in ministry, in life, in leading people, you're going to go through this. And I wrote this book. I started really trying to unpack the spiritual side of betrayal. And I decided to write about three demons that I believe are very intricate parts of betrayal. And that is the Absalom spirit, uh, Leviathan, which I never would think goes with betrayal, but it's sort of the prideful nature of Leviathan and the twisting nature. And then Judas. And this book was such an eye-opening experience for me as I studied this. And so if you guys haven't gotten this, go to Amazon or my website, ryanlestrange.com. So I've been talking about this. It's been something I've been thinking about. And then I saw Apostle Jennifer, you released a prophecy about the enemy really just releasing a spirit of betrayal. And so I want to kind of get you to share some of that word and how it came to you to kind of open this up. Yeah, it was just really a couple of weeks ago. And you know, I get up like four o'clock in the morning most days, so it's quiet. And the Lord will really speak to me during that time. And he just quite flatly said to me that a spirit of betrayal has been loosed in the earth. And I'm like, whoa, now we know that this is not a new thing. Betrayal is always creeping round and about. But when God says, listen, when God says something has been loosed in the earth, that means it's been loosed with a velocity, with a ferociousness. That means it's going to begin to manifest more and more and more. That's why your book, it's like right on time. I hope everybody on this broadcast has a copy or can get a copy because when something is loosed, it is thrust upon the earth. And the reason why I believe that is because, or why, why the enemy is doing that 
is because covenant is so important in this hour. Relationships are so important in this hour where there's unity. God commands a blessing. And so we're already seeing all this chaos in the earth. We're already seeing fear in the earth. We're already seeing trauma in the earth. And now you add to that this betrayal and people become absolutely paranoid. So this spirit of betrayal is just so crafty. It can stab you in the back, though, only after it's walked beside you mm. long enough to earn your trust. And that's the thing. I always see these memes that says, you know, it, it, the, the, the sad part about betrayal is it never comes from your enemies. It always comes from your friends. Wow. And that now that's the th that's the whole thing. And so I think this is the thing that I want to get at the heart of for people is that when you go through this, it's not like it's somebody that you expect it to come from. You know, it's one thing if you kind of discern and you're you're very prophetic. You've been training people for years on this. It's one thing if you discern from a distance, okay, this person that's kind of coming into my sphere, they've got issues and I'm going to hold them off. But like in the case of Judas with Jesus, he was up close. So the thing about Judas that was such a devastating thing really on a personal level is that he was in the inner circle of Jesus. He saw the miracles of Jesus. He walked with Jesus. And yet somewhere in that, Satan found a foothold. And I think that's the thing that we've got to be aware of is that the enemy comes and he finds those footholds in, unfortunately, relationships that are close to us. And as you said, one of the things I've been personally learning through sort of the COVID slowdowns and not traveling as much is the value of relationship. And I really mm -hmm. believe in the kingdom of God that everything that's healthy should look like a family. And mm -hmm. there are disagreements. Sometimes there are seasons where you're not connecting with somebody as, as much. Um, mm -hmm. And that all is part of a healthy dynamic that happens in relationships. But then when betrayal comes in, it's really devastating. So you've been in ministry for a long mm -hmm. time. I know because I know your personal story, you went through betrayal mm -hmm. in a very personal way in your marriage, uh, your former mm -hmm. marriage. But in ministry, what do you think is one of the greatest betrayal type of situations you went through? Oh, my goodness. Um, there are a good number of them. I remember, um, well, gosh, where do I even start? Let me talk about the time we had a worship leader who he was the worship pastor. And we were just launching a church. We'd been a house of prayer, awakening house of prayer. And we launched the church. And right around that time, he started getting, because I was the leader and he was like the support pastor. He was a worship leader. And he began to manifest an Absalom spirit, which sought to draw people to himself, a very disloyal spirit, a very offended spirit, a very prideful spirit. And, and you know, as you say in your book, Leviathan, Judas and Absalom, at first, I don't know what was hitting me. This Leviathan spirit came in. Uh, this Absalom spirit began to manifest and he basically started his own ministry. I was traveling. A lot of the times I was traveling with you and the whole crew we were traveling with. And while I was gone, he was telling people I'm leaving. And he was handing out his business cards to start his own ministry right under wow. my nose. I never would have expected it in a million years. And then when I confronted him about it, he said, oh, well, you know, it's just the will of the Lord for me to go, but I'm going to stay here another month. And I'm like, no, 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 you're not going to stay here. You're, you're going to go. And I was really hurt by that because this man was an elder. He was a friend. Um, he had been a great support to me for a long, long time. I mean, when we first started the house of prayer, I mean, it was like me by myself. So when he came along, you know, I was, I was thrilled that there was a, a worship guy, a pastoral guy, because I'm really not all that pastoral. And I remember mourning over this. And I was in the house of prayer, and this is really important for all of you who are dealing with betrayal, who are dealing with an Absalom sort of situation. I was really mourning the loss of this relationship. And the Lord said something to me similar to what he said to Saul, uh, rather to Samuel with regard to Saul. He said, don't mourn for Absalom. And that really set me free because when we go through betrayals, a lot of times what happens is we continue to mourn for that lost relationship instead of realizing that we're actually better off. That if it wasn't mm -hmm. a betrayal now, it would have been a betrayal a year or two or three years ago. You might as well just clean house now. So that was one. But it seems as if uh, this spirit really creeps into ministry unaware, so gifted, so talented, so charismatic. And, and it's like we have these blind spots in ministry because I know, I don't know about you, uh, Apostle Ryan, but when I first got saved, I thought we were all on the same team. And therefore, right. I, I was never expecting the, um, the betrayal and the backlash. Yeah. And I think that's the challenge because when we come into ministry, we come into the church, 
we we are thinking very idealistic at times. We're not realizing sort of the the weaknesses of human beings. And I think that example you gave is so good because I would say probably half of the betrayals I've been through in I guess about twenty five years of ministry mm -hmm. now have come from uh, people who were hungry for a platform and opportunity. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it, you know there was a time in our ministry it was very very small, like meaning that. I wasn't reaching the world and I wasn't doing big stuff. But even at that small stage, there was always someone like, hey, I want to talk to his 10 people. You know, there's always somebody yep. trying to get in there. And the thing that that will happen at times is people will flatter you. We know that Jezebel is a huge flattering spirit, but they'll flatter you. They'll they'll come in and tell you all these things that you're longing to hear. In the case you gave, if you're building something from the ground up, they'll come mm -hmm. and they'll offer assistance. But there's there's a motive. And I think that a lot of times ministry and church life betrayals can kind of come from two angles. There are people with a motive when they come into it, like they come into it with a motive and they're really connecting to you mm -hmm. for opportunity, for notoriety, to meet other people. And then there are other people like kind of how Judas was that didn't necessarily come with an evil motive, but Satan found a lodging place. Mm -hmm. And as leaders, we have to be aware of this, is that you're going to go through this. And I people will say to me sometimes, you know, I just don't want to go through this. But in reality, no matter how great your discernment is, no matter how strong your prayer life is, you are going to go through situations if you are in the church world, even as just a member, that things are going to go amiss in relationships. And I think it's very important how you handle it. You know, I have found when I've personally gone through really deep betrayals, uh, really, really hard ones. I can know what spirit it is. I can know it's demonic. I can know I'm better off, but it can shake me at times, the really mm -hmm. bad ones, to even question, okay, you know, am I really supposed to do this? Because this is so challenging. Mm -hmm. Maybe even in ministry, these four things are good, but now I'm doing this other thing and a bomb just went off. And I find that spiritual attacks cause you to question your identity, your role. Did you find when you went through that, that you you felt that kind of questioning and how did you sort of navigate the unsettled type of feeling you had? Yeah. I mean, you know, with Awakening House of Prayer, which is now only eight years old, I've wanted to quit more times than not. I would say that almost every ministry betrayal, almost, not all, Almost every ministry betrayal and certainly almost all the warfare that I've experienced has come from the local church, from the house of prayer. Um, you know, we had, I'll give you another quick story, a spiritual son, a, a young man who came up under a, a very large ministry uh, and I hired him to be on my staff. And, you know, he, he, he had an anointing. He was a precious young man, but he also had a lot of trouble, a lot of issues, but never opened up about them. And he was one that was just a young opportunist. And when he found out that, you know, I told him when I hired him, I'm not hiring you to preach. I'm hiring you to pastor. I'm hiring you to shepherd. Well, he had such a bad attitude and I kept trying to work with him, work with him, because he's a young man. Well, he ended up leaving. I came back from London on a Friday, on a Saturday. I was going to Singapore on a Monday. He was covering for me preaching while I was doing this world travel. And when in between the Saturday and the Monday, he says, I'm quitting. I'm resigning. I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm leaving and mm. I'm out of here. And that one, that one right there broke my heart. The worship pastor, it was hurtful. That one there broke my heart because this was the heir apparent of my ministry. I knew he had issues, but I really believe that he could overcome. I really believe that he was growing. He was learning. He had straightened his attitude out and it broke my heart. And I mean, that was such a deep, deep hurt. Um, that I actually had to resist making inner vows. I could hear the inner vows in my head saying, I'm never letting anybody close to me again. Mm. I'm never letting anybody, you know, come into the ministry and do anything again. I'm going to do it all myself. And when we take that attitude of I'm not going to do this or I'm always or I'm never, what we're doing is we're actually bowing even further to the enemy assignment to control us, to shut us down through these inner vows. And so you know, one thing we have to always remember is God saw it and God didn't like it, but God will work it out for our good if we'll just forgive. And that's a that's a hard word. And I think it took me about a year to totally get over that one. I mean, here's a son raised up in my own house, uh, the heir apparent of my ministry. I promised him the world and he stabbed me in the back. So that one was particularly difficult. And um, again, it took me like a year to get over it. 
Wow, that's such a great example. And I love how you said you, you were very aware and conscious not to make those inner vows. I remember yeah. um, going through a situation. I planted a, a church. I was young in, in leading a church. And I went through just a, a horrendous church split. Uh, it was classic betrayal. It's not, mm -hmm. I don't think it's in this book, but I went through it. It was really difficult. It's really challenging. And in the process of it, and this is the thing as a leader, in the process of it, part of why it happened was because I began to confront some things in the lives of the two people involved that were really problematic character. I don't mean just like we didn't see eye to eye. I mean like not being honest with finances, not being honest mm. with certain things. And so then when this betrayal happened and when it unfolds, you know, it's really hard. It's really challenging. There was a lot of lies. Now, God had given me prophetic dreams and I had went to some of the people involved. And I began to talk to them and I began to share with them, something's wrong with you. And I, I sense mm -hmm. it. I feel it. Can we talk? And the crazy thing is they would smile like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to be out of town this week and we'll talk next week, knowing that the whole split was going to unfold that weekend. And they just weren't telling me. So as I began to work through this, you know, I went through devastation. I went through anger. I went through frustration. But one day I'm praying and the Holy Spirit said to me, I want you to begin to pray for them because the Bible says to pray for your enemies. Mm -hmm. And he said, I want you to begin to pray for them. Now I'm thinking, you know, I know all kinds of prayers pray like God, <laughs> let fire come down, you know, let the tongue cling to the roof of their mouth. I'm thinking all old Testament prayers, no new mm -hmm. Testament stuff. And God starts saying to me, no, your healing process and your personal deliverance is you've got to let go of this. And so I had to really, I never will forget that first day. I had to begin to pray by faith. God, thank you for so-and-so. I bless them. I ask you to move in their lives. I forgive them. And the first day, it was just by faith. The second day, it was just by faith. I, it may have been a week or so. And then the Holy Spirit started giving me compassion. And I started getting freer and freer and freer. And it ended up, the whole thing came first circle. There was a lot of life changes that happened in the lives of people involved. And the main leader of it, ended up coming to me and having a, a very open, heartfelt, honest, reconciliatory conversation. And we've got a great relationship today. But wow. here was the thing. The devil was trying to bind me. And mm -hmm. I could have easily not discerned it. And like you said, made those inner vows, said things with my mouth. And I, to be honest, I don't remember all that. I probably did say some things that I had to renounce later. Mm -hmm. But I find when you go through betrayal, especially if it's in the kingdom, that Satan doesn't just use it. It's not just splitting your church. It's not just for those of you that a friend betrayed you, a mentor betrayed. It's not just that you lost that, that opportunity. There's a whole multiple layered effect of your emotions, your spiritual life. Satan comes after so many areas. And I don't think, Apostle Jennifer, we always discern like it's not just dealing with a rogue person. It is a full blast spiritual attack. And if you don't get the mind of God, it's going to take you out. And so knowing that, you know, prophetically as a very prophetic leader, how would you counsel people? Should they try to discern the spirit behind it? Uh, what prayer strategies have you found to be effective? How do we sort of move in the spiritual side of recovery? Yeah. You know, I think that, um, when people show you who they are, you need to believe them. It's always shocking when people betray us. We don't want to believe it. Sometimes, listen, sometimes we even justify the behavior. If you've got a victim mentality, you'll actually begin to protect your abuser and you'll think there's something wrong with you. Let me just set you free. There's nothing wrong with you. You didn't deserve it. It doesn't matter you know, what mistakes you made or, or maybe you wouldn't do what they want. See, Jesus, Judas betrayed him because he, he was disappointed. He was offended. He wanted Jesus to be like you know, the natural king, you know, to, to rule over Israel in the natural, whereas he was really the spiritual leader. And so Judas got so offended and so disappointed that he betrayed Judas. So you know, whatever you didn't do to live up to their expectations, that's not on you. You keep following the Lord. So first of all, take the blame off yourself. Don't try to figure out what could I have done to avoid this? Just let yourself off the hook. Should you have discerned it? We'd like to think that we will, but you know what? We've all fallen for this issue. And part of the reason why is because we sometimes develop soul ties mm. with the people who have betrayed us. That's probably why it hurts so bad is because like the soul of Jonathan and the soul of David, 
were knit together. And the Bible actually says that, you know, in Psalm 55, I believe, as David said, my friend who I broke bread with lifted up his heel against me. He was pouring out his heart over the betrayal he felt. And many people say that it was, it was Jonathan that actually betrayed him. So stop blaming yourself, break those soul ties, and that can be a process. It doesn't happen overnight. And then really take the time to self, not self-examine from the sense of like what you did wrong, but like, what can you learn from it? I've never made a mistake in my life where I didn't debrief with the Holy Spirit and say, what, what, what should I learn? So I can hopefully avoid this again, even though I've been betrayed so many times, but I'll say this vindication is the story of my life. It's been since I've been born again, God has been vindicating me and vindicating me and vindicating me and vindicating me. And I decree right now in Jesus name that you will be vindicated from every betrayal, you will see the vindication and the glory of God and the vengeance of the Lord upon the spirits that tried to bind you. Mm, that was so good. You gave so many good and vital pieces of information. And, you know, I want to share with people because I think a lot of people I'm watching the comments, you're saying, I've been through this. I'm going through this. I had a very eye opening experience. Now, my mentor is a very strong, my spiritual father who launched me in ministry, very strong man, Dr. Norval Hayes. And he had a very interesting ministry because he traveled, but he had a Bible college and a local church campus. And he had literally went through seasons and times where he had had somebody leading that and they would betray him. I mean, I remember when I first got there, there was a whole split that had happened uh, right before I got there. A lot of interesting things. And Dr. Hayes used to say things to us like, look, guys, if everybody walks out on you and you got a church, you get up there with you and your wife and you start preaching again to two people and you go on the streets and you pray for people and win souls and you rebuild that. And I was preaching for a, a great apostle, a friend of mine in the 70s, who at one time had three church campuses in, in an airplane flying back and forth. And he was telling me stories of how, you know, he had put a person over a campus and they tried to steal the building from him. And he was like, he said, Ryan, I told them when God put it in my spirit to build this, it doesn't matter what you do, because if I built it once, I've got the anointing to rebuild it. And it was such a, a, a charge of faith to me because I said, you know what, when God calls you, it doesn't matter what hell throws you. You know, Absalom thought for sure he had wrestled the kingdom away from David, but he didn't mm -hmm. understand. David was not a politician. David was not somebody that got to a position of power because of a skill set. It was because he was a prophet. He understood the presence of God, the anointing of God. So when he was under siege, he went right back to that. And I was just uh, had a, a, a brilliant man of God that came and met with me recently who was sharing a story of he had a church of 550 people, came under a severe emotional attack, took a sabbatical, and 500 of the people split off and left. He comes back from a spiritual attack and a sabbatical to 50 people. And he's been rebuilding. And he was telling me, because it's been several years ago, the joy of the Lord that's been upon him and how he's found new life and all of this. And so I'm saying all that to say this to you, that at the end of the day, if you're a called person, which all of you are, you're a kingdom mm -hmm. person, and you begin to soar in your calling, a lot of times you see Apostle Jennifer, you see me, you see other leaders, and you just think, man, their life is great. They're traveling from place to place. They're eating nice meals. You don't understand there's a velocity of attack that happens. And I mm -hmm. just want the people of God to understand because you are called, because you are anointed, there are going to be attacks. And Satan is not going to use something that won't work. It's like somebody asked me recently, they said, do you get bothered when people write the blogs and stuff about you. And you know, because we were friends when it first started happening, I did when it first happened. And then I realized mm -hmm. like, that's just a part of the territory. So mm -hmm. I can't ask for the blessing and not handle some of the criticism. That's a part mm -hmm. of that public persona. And I said, you know, it doesn't bother me when someone who doesn't know me does it, but like when someone's walked alongside of you in an intimate yeah. way and been a part mm -hmm. of your, the fabric of your life and they do it, you got to get the Holy ghost to get through that. Yeah. But the <laughs> yeah. thing I've learned is the anointing is still there. And I believe, I want to get your take because you've written so much about the prophetic. You've got, a, I think, a stellar book out right now about uh, prophetic witchcraft. And if, if they mm -hmm. haven't gotten that, they really, really need to get that. But um, is it, do you feel like this kind of spirit, these spirits hit prophetic people more? Do you feel like there's something that attracts it more? Um, I've always believed the Jezebelic thing comes more at prophetic leaders, but what is your take on these sort of spirits coming at prophetic people? Yeah, that's a great question. I do. Um, you know, nobody's immune to it, obviously. Nobody is ever going to escape the reality that we will be, we will face betrayal. 
But with prophetic people in particular, it, it's almost like the devil just really takes pleasure in saying, ha ha, I fooled you. You're so prophetic. You remember when Jesus was arrested and they began to slap him. They said, now prophesy, who hit you? And that was just the perfect example. Since I wrote the book, Discerning Prophetic Witchcraft, I have never had so many false prophets try to infiltrate my ministry. And one did, one actually did. Uh, someone who called himself a son and then started sort of scooping up all my young adults at my church and calling them spiritual sons and daughters under my nose on Facebook lives that I wasn't watching. I never seen anything like it. And so the enemy really loves to come against prophetic people because you as a prophetic person, you carry the voice of God and the enemy wants you to shut up. The enemy wants you to be so hurt that you don't want to speak. He wants you to feel so badly about yourself, no discernment, lacking security that you just give up and quit. And so I think apostles too, we see that Paul in the Bible, you know, he said, you know, Demas betrayed me. Nobody stood with me at my first trial. Only, you know, only Timothy, uh, you know, Mark skirted out on them and, and he had a issue with Barnabas as well, although they all reconciled in the end, thank God. But I think apostles and prophets deal with another level of warfare. Leviathan is thick down here in my territory. We're surrounded by water in the Florida panhandle. We're down in the peninsula and the, the bottom part of the state of South Florida. And we see so many people just absolutely taking on this Leviathan spirit, twisting your words, accusing you. One of the worst ways to be betrayed, I believe, is through accusation. Because it's like double harm. It's like, first of all, they dare to, to betray you. But second of all, they want to make it about you as if you're the evil one. You're the one who did the dirty. And so, yeah, I think apostles and prophets deal with these things a little more. Yeah. And I want to, so I want to ask a couple more questions. Now, I just want to give a disclaimer. We talked about this on Apostle Jennifer's Facebook. So mm -hmm. uh, you can get more info on some of this. We were really talking about her book, but we shared some practical things. But I think it will be good and helpful for the people because we are leaders and we're trying to be transparent, trying to help people. You know, God brought you and I together in a very powerful season of our lives, very powerful time. My ministry was kind of going to another level. I was leading a, a bit of a local and regional center. My media voice was taking off and you mm -hmm. were in charisma over the website of things, transitioning the magazine and a new platform. And we really had a burden mm -hmm. to sort of go and ignite uh, revival around America. And we see now a lot of things happening in America. And we're saying to ourselves, like, you know, God was really, we, we were really hearing from God to go to these yeah. territories and prophesy and all these sort of things. And it was a, a relationship that, that the Holy Spirit really used in a very effective way. I've told people many times because we would do conferences and events together. Um, and there was no sort of like, okay, you preach 20 minutes longer than I did. And a lot of times with preachers, this kind of crazy stuff happens. Mm -hmm. But um, we, as we began to grow and God began to kind of unfold our own apostolic directions to us, you know, there began to be some, some sort of attacks coming against our relationship. And I mm -hmm. think we've talked through this now, but one of the things we see without trying to be accusatory is that Satan did begin to send people to sort of stir the waters. And I want to just mm -hmm. say this, we're always responsible for us. So I'm responsible mm -hmm. for myself, any decisions I make, anything I say that I've got to repent of later. And I've done much of that in 25 yeah. plus years. But mm -hmm. I feel like the enemy really began to come against our apostolic alignment. And I think I've experienced this when I've been aligned with other people in a vertical way. You know, my spiritual father, Dr. Hayes, he rebuked me at times. There were times people came into the circle and the sphere that I didn't gel with. And I, the devil would tell me, you just need to disconnect. I've seen this on a horizontal alignment when I've been aligned with somebody that we're running together. I believe a lot of times the most powerful kingdom relationships come under attack. And so I feel like what we experienced was that we were effective. Our relationship was effective. We were doing amazing kingdom work. We were growing and kind of figuring that out. But mm -hmm. same kind of, brought some of these spirits in our circumference and maybe we mishandled it, but it definitely happened. And I feel like that's yeah. something that can really happen to people. And maybe even viewers have been through this. And I feel like with you and I, the thing that was so powerful is we just got together when we processed through it and talked and we were able yeah. to say, you know, this is like uh, uh, just an attack, but we didn't yeah. necessarily discern it at the time. So going through that, you yeah. know, do you believe that it was the enemy sending these kind of spirits our way and what do you think if other people are experiencing this, like in their relational connections, how could they guard themselves better? Yeah, it, it was definitely a, a flat out spiritual attack. And it wasn't just for one person. There were several. I remember looking out 
uh, you and I will be up on the platform together, handing the mic back and forth, prophesying over people, praying for people, the glory of God was falling. And I remember seeing certain other ministry leaders who were actually very jealous. And so I should have, and, and we talked about certain things. Like I would tell you, you know, this one's trying to ride your coattails, be careful. And we would always heed each other's warnings. How that spirit got in, you know, I still don't know completely. I felt things shifting between us. I felt things changing, but I also felt like I couldn't say anything. And that was also an enemy strategy. I would say this to all of you out there, whether it's a marriage, whether it's a best friend, whether it's a ministry relationship, um, you, you've got to just open your mouth. You, you've got to fight. If, if there's one thing I regret about how that unfolded, it's that I didn't fight harder for the relationship. I didn't just fly up to Virginia and just say, hey, you know what? We're just going to sit down and we're going to, if we have to fight, we're going to fight. You know, if we got to duke it out, we're going to duke it out. We're going to put everything on the table because when we did finally get together and, and sit there for a couple hours and talk, we put everything out on the table and it became so crystal clear who and what was operating. Uh, and it, it, we both, I think, got irritated, but we're also both happy because we could see, you know what, we both fell for it, but we, we pushed that spirit out. And now I really truly believe God is going to do greater things. We've got our own ministries. We're going in our own directions, but there's still, as you can see by watching this broadcast, such a tremendous synergy. And, and I believe that what the enemy meant for harm, God's working out for good. And he will for you too. Yeah, I think that's so great. I totally agree, the communication. And you know, one thing that really helped me in our situation was when we began to communicate, because I'm pretty, you know, I've had really bad situations. And if somebody reaches out to me and says, you know, I didn't handle that right, or let's talk, I'm usually pretty open. Now, if if it's just outlandish, like they're just really Jezebelic, I'm not mm -hmm. going to open it up again, because you said it so good earlier, when people show you who they are, you need to get it. I think it yeah. was Maya Angelou, the great poet that yeah. said, uh, when a person shows you who they are, believe them the first time. And that's mm -hmm. hard when you're trying mm -hmm. to think about grace. But one thing in our relationship that helped me is I was able to step back when we kind of circled back and started communicating. And I began to say, man, Jennifer and I had such great fruit. It, mm -hmm. There was such fruitfulness in our connection. So therefore, I, I understand the hand of the Lord was on it. And I think sometimes for the viewers, when you go through attacks, maybe with the church you're in, you go through attacks in relationships, you go through attacks with friends. If you can communicate, that's a big thing. And then look at the fruit. Mm -hmm. Now, there have been some relationships that manifested in a bad way. And I was able to step back and look at the fruit and say, that was not good fruit. Like I've really, this has been a rule of thumb for me during COVID because I have been in a slower pace traveling. I've looked at the people and places I've not missed. Like I don't have, feel an absence from them. And I've said, okay, like this might be the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit cleaning house in some ways, because to be more fruitful, you got to say no to some things. But I think mm -hmm. the communication is so relevant. And I, you know, demons always hide in the dark. So once you start mm -hmm. to bring things up on the table, even if it's painful, even if it's difficult, even if you're the one that blew it in the situation, it can be so healthy. And I want the people to understand that this is really a season I believe that God is raising people up for kingdom works. One of our accelerating messages that we had the privilege of delivering together was Revival Hubs Rising, the book. Yes. And that kind of sent you and I on a this wild journey. I tell people, I feel like we preach every unusual thing in America that wasn't a normal church. And we, yeah. we were able to step back and assess it and say, okay, we really think that these hubs have to be more apostolic. They probably mm -hmm. have to have some kind of church or community tied into it. We sort of mm -hmm. were able to, measure what we felt like God was getting ready to do in America in this next move. And I'm convinced that now more than ever, after the other side of this weird COVID season we've been in, that these kind of out of the box ministries are so needed. And so one of the mm -hmm. things that I feel prophetically is a lot of people right now are being given prophetic insight to be a part of the next move of God. And that's mm -hmm. why many of you have been under attack. That's why many of you have gone through relational challenges. Mm -hmm. That's why many of you have gone through pain and you've gone through hurts and I really believe if you can take sort of the healing balm of Gilead that we're dispensing tonight and apply it to yourself, you've got to be in position to be mm -hmm. activated. I believe, Apostle Jennifer, that there's something to apostolic activation. And that's why I wanted to do this mm -hmm. series with apostolic women is that powerful women like you are activating people. You're accelerating people. So how much of this warfare do you feel like 
is trying to stall people's purpose out and and then maybe what do you see coming what do you feel like is the next thing god's getting ready to do in the earth yeah this this really this is a time where it's almost like we're separating the true believers or how should i say this the believers from the unbelieving believer they're still saved but they're not in faith uh they're in fear they're in doubt they're in unbelief this is a season where there's warfare coming against us in every way that it can come against our minds for many against your finances against your families there's all sorts of attacks brewing uh in the earth right now and this is a time where you know god is sifting he's allowing a sifting of his people so listen if you've been going through it if you've been going through trials maybe if you've stumbled and fallen maybe if you felt kind of weak you know don't beat yourself up because god is just sifting you he's just showing you what's coming because when this great awakening hits he wants you to be at the front and center of it the cutting edge of it and it's going to happen i don't know when the great awakening is going to happen but i know that god is stirring in my heart once again to do more revival meetings i'm not talking about you know the, the advertised you know four day tent revival meetings i mean where the glory of god actually comes in people are healed with no one touching them a strong bold message that leads to repentance is prayer preached and the unbelievers the real unbelievers get saved and god wants to use you as part of this next great move of god there's a remnant i believe those of you watching us tonight you are remnant believers we're preaching to the choir god wants to use you to shake up the church he wants to use you to bring unity i mean there's so much that's about to happen he wants to use your voice he wants you to prophesy god is minting new apostles prophets evangelists pastors teachers intercessors out of this trial You're going to see some new voices emerge and you might be one of them so i would say to you tonight keep on pressing don't let the devil silence you don't let the pain from the past hold you back but keep looking up because god is pouring out mantles glory anointing and you need to position yourself to do that and you can't position yourself for what god has for you if you're over the corner licking a wound over a betrayal you got to shake it off and come up higher wow that's such a good word and i i agree with that so much you know right before uh, right before sort of the slowdown happened, I remember the Holy Spirit was dealing with me about impartation and he was showing mm -hmm. me that there was a level of outpouring that was coming and actually spoke to me. He said, Ryan, your stamina is not strong enough to deliver what I need to deliver through you in this coming hour. And so he began to have me do stuff like going to meetings and I would say, I'm praying for every single person. And I would be so mm -hmm. exhausted, but the Lord was yeah. telling me, I want to build your stamina because it's coming to the time and the wow. season that my glory is going to be so strong. My anointing is going to be so strong that it's going to be a challenge for you to physically hold up under it. And he was also telling me to increase my prayer stamina, to be able to pray to sustain wow. it strong, to be able to fast to sustain it strong. And so I believe what you said, that that is exactly where we're going. That is exactly what God is getting ready to do. And that's why we've got to be mindful mm -hmm. of some of the warfare. So I, I want to kind of sum Summarize, I'm going to give maybe my three lessons uh, about overcoming betrayal. And then I want you to give yours. And I also want to make sure people are aware of anything you have coming up. And I'm going to ask you to pray for them uh, mm -hmm. before we end. But I would say my three lessons uh, that if I could boil down the three takeaways concerning overcoming betrayal, I believe as Apostle Jennifer said, communication is key. I would mm -hmm. say don't ignore what you discern relationally or alignment wise. And then also don't be afraid to draw healthy boundaries. Now we said forgiveness and that's why I'm not re-saying that, but healthy boundaries is something I've had to really tap into personally and learn because a lot of times I would feel like I wasn't walking in love if I drew a boundary around someone, but I've learned that I've got to draw healthy boundaries just to be emotionally and spiritually healthy myself. So I think those are kind of my three big takeaways. What are your three big takeaways? I would say no, that God really will vindicate. Uh, he really will. And he'll actually give you something or someone better than what you had. So, so don't mourn for Absalom. Don't stay in that season of mourning. Um, the other thing is, you know, realize you, you really, you really truly are better off. When my husband left, you know, many people don't know he was a Mormon and I didn't know Mormons weren't Christians. I wasn't saved. And if he, if we had stayed married, guess where I would have been? I would have been a Mormon and mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been saved. And now, and I would have never stepped on my calling. So some people are actually assignments to hinder your call. And it's better that they're out of the way. And then really, really, I know I said this, but this really, please 
learn from it. Take the time to learn. Is there some, listen, is there something in you that draws these toxic people? Mm. Is there something in you where you're operating maybe in soulish compassion? So you had such a blind spot. God tried to tell you and he didn't. I asked the Lord just the other day, maybe several weeks ago now, uh, somebody had really betrayed me. And I said, it wasn't a close relationship, but close enough. And I said, how did I miss that? How did I miss it, God? And I debriefed and the Lord said, you didn't ignore the gentle, the, the, the still small voice. You, you, I mean, you, you ignored it. You, you, didn't, you didn't heed it because you wanted to believe something different. So those are the three things. There's so much to learn. Get, make sure you get Apostle Ryan's book on betrayal. Betrayal, betrayal from hell? Betrayal from yes, hell? Yeah. Betrayal from get a hell. copy of that. Yeah. And, and I was going to say, so I know you've got, I know you've got the book on witchcraft. What, mm-hmm. what, do you, what do you have going on or what material do you feel like people need to get this right now? Because you've got so much. Yeah, there's a lot. Um, we have a new series on developing spiritual discernment, and that's at schoolofthespirit.tv because I really believe that the lack of discernment is one of the most dangerous things for Christians in this hour. Schoolofthespirit.tv, just developing spiritual discernment. There's a lot out there. You can just go on my website and find anything you need. But um, yeah, we've, we've got to get equipped. That's the big thing in this time, in this time and this reset. You should be taking, we should, I know I am, and I know Apostle Ryan is taking the time to just go deeper in the word, study, get shored up in areas where we aren't, we are, we, you know, strength. Yes, I, I've been doing that. I've been, mm-hmm. this whole time has been a learning and growing time. So I think that's yeah. critical. Well, I want to end this in prayer because I've been reading the comments. There's so many uh, people that are saying, yes, I needed this. Yes, I've been going through it. So I want to just ask you as my guest to just pray over them, whatever you feel. Uh, just release it over them and we'll kind of end it in prayer. All right. So Father, we thank you for all those under the sound of our voices, all those who will watch the replay. God, we just lift them up to you. And we ask you, God, to help them to see through the pain of betrayal. Help them to see clearly your love for them, that you will never leave them, that you will never forsake them, even to the end of the age. Help them, Lord, to forgive those who have harmed them, God, to forgive them from their heart, to not allow this incident, this moment in time, to keep them stuck in a place in a past that will hinder them from their future. God, just help them to see, help them to to just let it go, help them to shake it off and come up higher, help them to forgive their abusers, their accusers, those who came in as opportunists, those who came in and grew offended. God, we're just giving them all to you right now in Jesus' name. Break the soul ties in the name of the Lord. Help us, Lord, to to just to just know that you are good and you've got a good and perfect will for us. Our destiny is not derailed. You're, we're still in your path and you are ordering our steps into a breakthrough that will almost make all of this pain worth it in the end. And I bless all of you and Apostle Ryan and Joy in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Listen, everybody, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Tomorrow morning, if you're on live at 9 a.m., my spiritual son, Apostle Charlie, is going to be on here uh, doing another broadcast on Apostolic Women. His guest is going to be Apostle Cynthia Thompson from Florida. She's a powerhouse. I preached for her in her virtual uh, Prophets Intensive, Prophets and Apostles Intensive. Anyways, she's amazing. They're going to be talking tomorrow about the prophetic. It'll be deep. It'll be powerful. It's 9 a.m. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Apostle Jennifer, thank you for being with me again. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thanks to everybody. I'm going to let you go. Replay viewers, thank you. And I appreciate all your shares, all your likes, all the stars. God bless you, everybody, and have a great day.